Okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm very excited and honored to be here. Uh, uh, the time uh, goes, so I'll go a bit fast because I'm not sure how, uh, if I can uh, fill all the time. So I'll talk about uh, a little bit about KAIST, ID KAIST, and HCI uh, Group at KAIST. And also, uh, uh, I'll kind of explain uh, about design from uh, my background and uh, other uh, some uh, ex examples of my research, which is uh, under the term augmented design and why I call it augmented design. And finally, I uh, present some thoughts about the future design. So I came from Korea, which takes about 10 hours by flight. And uh, KAIST is located about uh, two and a half hours by bus from Incheon Airport to, to Daejeon, which is a city uh, located, uh, KAIST is located. So if you come, and uh, I mean, there is a direct flight, it is not that uh, far. So in fact, actually, if you have a one sleep, then, then you arrive in Korea and just uh, by a train, uh, it's just in Daejeon. So uh, we, we have ISS conference this November uh, uh, in, in KAIST. Uh, KAIST is a kind of one of the top uh, engineering university in uh, Korea, and uh, we are, our reputation is pretty kind of growing, and in 2017, we were a kind of uh, selected to number, were the no, six uh, most innovative universities. So, uh, and also at KAIST, we have HCI group, uh, which is, I found that the most is kind of similar size and uh, kind of composition. Uh, so we have uh, 20, uh, right now, almost like around 20 labs, but it's growing, and uh, uh, School of Computing and the Department of Industrial Design and uh, all other uh, graduate school, graduate school cultural technology, knowledge service engineering, mechanical and civil engineering. Those departments uh, are the, the, the professors from these departments. So because KAIST is an engineering university, uh, 
we don't have uh, humanity subjects like a social science, a psychology, and cognitive science. So the, the, I, was, uh, I was a founding member of this group uh, about 10 years ago because mainly we want to improve our kind of visibility in Kai community or the Sikai community because uh, we had the difficulties of writing papers and preparing all these kind of, uh, kind of academic deadlines. So we wanted to kind of have internal workshop and sharings and, and then uh, kind of it worked. So, but one of the interesting thing is um, the, our department is because uh, not so many uh, SCI group has so many uh, faculties from design department because uh, design department sometimes we have no, it's a very limited, our publication venues are very limited. So uh, kind of to survive as a, as a department, uh, we kind of have a lot of uh, faculty members kind of publish our work in uh, Kai community or the Sikai community, that's why. So majority force of HCI group at KAIST is uh, almost like a, about 60 or 70 percent of our department is involved in HCI KAIST group. And other uh, majority force are school of computing and also related topics in computer engineering subjects. So we are still growing. So there are all sorts of kind of interesting works uh, in HCI, but the, I'll be talking more about our department because uh, the kind of which is I from. Uh, so Department of Industrial Design KAIST is quite unique uh, because uh, it started in uh, engineering university about, uh, 30, about 30 years ago. Uh, at that time, most of the design schools still uh, are from uh, art college. So uh, we wanted to kind of, the KAIST just wanted to have a design department which has a strong background in science and technology. And then uh, the industry grows, uh, uh, the Korean industry, especially Samsung, LG, the digital uh, electronics industry grows. We also grew uh, together. So uh, gradually our focus was more about the designing digital technologies and in the end we were much more involved in human-centered design, interaction design, user experience design, HCI. And now uh, we are more looking at more kind of broad perspective because design plays uh, different roles in different part of the society. So social innovation and business innovation. So we are now focusing more on design driven innovation and then wanted to kind of uh, uh, think about new paradigms and what could be the new uh, design and roles and expertise. So this is a short video clip to show the, our design process and some of the showcase of our research work uh, and our facilities and our students. So just a short video. So video has a lot of research content inside and each figure is related to the research project. So if you visit this website and if you click the images, then it will tell you more about uh, the project related and also the prototypes it's describing. So uh, maybe you can use this, this site for further. But uh, me, uh, I was kind of uh, uh, the prototype of this school because I was the first student of this uh, program and also I was first student of undergrad student, master student, I was the first professor became uh, a, in this department. So I was, I was the first kind of lab uh, rat at that time. The, uh, my professor experimented a lot with me. And, uh, but uh, to me, design, learning design was really hard 
uh, mainly because uh, I, I came in as a kind of more like engineering student at KAIST, but uh, what we studied was basically about Bauhaus style, more like artistic style design. But uh, studying design, if you study hard, then maybe you have a kind of a cop accomplishment of a, you are getting more expertise. But that was the hard part. And I, I studied hard, but sometimes studying design doesn't guarantee that your expertise goes high. So that's why that was, I found that the learning design was very difficult. So I, I was very, that's why I was become interested in IT related topics because when I studied IT, then I kind of feel that I could increase my expertise. So that's why I became more interested in combining design and IT since that time. And that was the time the computer technology really uh, kind of grow fast. So uh, first technology, so that's why I use this information and communication technology as a first as a material and subject matter design and a second uh, as a tool for designing. So the first, uh, first kind of material that I uh, was come across was uh, computer graphics. So, so I, I got a first job at the computer graphics studio and then producing this kind of graphics animation in a really long time ago. At that time, we, had, we used very heavy computer graphics uh, uh, workstation at that time. And then uh, second the technology that I came across was the web and internet technologies. And at that time, we uh, kind of, uh, I was involved in first uh, kind of navigation software design uh, in the mid 90s. And, uh, and I, I, w I was de doing the graphic design and information architecture mm -hmm. and, and so on. So I was more interested, became more interested in HCCI related topics. And then uh, third technology that I come across was uh, physical computing and augmented reality and virtual reality. So I, ha I use a lot of these elements in my uh, teaching because uh, the industrial design became more kind of uh, combining this digital uh, and physical technology together. So uh, the even designers had to uh, produce uh, fully working, uh, electronic working prototypes at that time. And so even before Arduino, we had to kind of use some of the microcontrollers uh, to build uh, some of the prototype that we wanted to build. So now uh, the new technologies came like IoT, big data, AI. So this also changes what I, uh, what I do because the material is now being changing. So but over this time still it's uh, very hard to uh, study design and teach design. So uh, I uh, now after uh, about three years first I came across this design subject. Now I kind of uh, build some kind of uh, analysis and models that how can I explain design. So this is one of the, one of the concepts that I explain design. So the, I think I explain design is more like a finding constellation because you are not actually inventing something new, but uh, sometimes we look at the sky and we find this kind of pattern. So this is fundamentally what design is about. And uh, we have a Korean saying called, uh, I'm not sure this is the right translation, but even if you have a lot of bees, if you don't connect it well, then it's not a jewelry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it's, it's a making uh, jewelry is uh, building or finding bees and connecting it into, uh, as a jewelry. So, so that's why I think uh, uh, design is uh, really about ha uh, finding harmonious linked nodes or linked bees of four elements. So, these four elements, uh, I thought that this is usually the design is kind of designed for people, designed for business, and designed for technology. And also, there are really representation is the key. So if we have those four Bs and they're connected together, then probably we can come up with a good design. That's, that's what I now explain what design is about and also how design works. But this is really... Uh, Related to uh, what we build in new technology, sometimes we uh, come up with a, a very people-centered value and then uh, con consider the constraints or the market constraints and people's constraints and then connect it together and then uh, come up with a representation as, as an idea, a prototype, and then see if whether that is feasible to build. So this is uh, probably the the process that we can describe the design process. So the, but 
what it actually happened in the studio or teaching context is sometimes we come up with, we explore many different kind of values. It's a very vague stage. And then uh, think about other constraints, but not only one, multiple constraints. And then come up with a representation and different representation. And then think about the uh, feasibility of these ideas. But as soon as we see that more like a visible links all those took for, then it becomes our initial ideas. And then we polish, polish this uh, bees and links together. So we finally become like a more hard links like this. But what I claim is that uh, this uh, often is very well known design process, which is I think, which is not always true. Because when I, uh, when my, my struggle at that time when I learned design was not always followed like this. So these days what I propose is that sometimes design process is not like this linear fashion. It's not like a double diamond in a very linear process. Sometimes design process come, starts with a very unique representation, which is nothing to do with the value constraint and technology. And then sometimes it, these represent random, random representation uh, is linked to not related values and not related technology, but sometimes to do with the constraints. And then initial ideas already is being formed in very early stage of design. And then uh, you still uh, explore many different ideas with different B's and O's. And then until you find the meaningful links of the design. So up until this time, sometimes you have these meaningful needs, uh, me meaningful uh, links together. And then you have first kind of uh, uh, ideas, which is connecting all these uh, bees together. And then you start to polish and then to make a more concrete ideas. So the end results are the same, but the process sometimes is so different because uh, when we teach design, we always kind of being forced to think about the users and values first. That's why sometimes we lose a lot of good intuition at the end. So uh, my approach to design is sometimes not always, I know that, that this is a very user-centered, value-driven design is uh, very ideal, but sometimes we don't have to kind of lose these chances of starting from intuition and ideas. So in the end, the chains are same. So there are a lot of uh, implications for these design ideas because there are two different phases. So the phase one is a concept development and the second is a detailed design. So up until this stage is very different. So once you have this, this phase, then detailed design phase, maybe uh, you can more like a structurized as a more like engineering design process too. But it, up until this phase is very unknown process. So I could divide this phase one and phase two, which is kind of a first double diamond, the first phase of a do double diamond design process. But uh, in fact, what I describe as a, uh, as a design a definition is, I, 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 I use this definition, which is uh, uh, kind of proposed by Herbert Simon and Flaring is RCA, which is it's much more to do with uh, making uh, the world, transforming the world from current state to the preferred state. So uh, in my research, I use this uh, definition as a design. So, which is really uh, about uh, preferred state for people. So that's why I think the designer should have a really deep understanding about the preference or preferred state for people. And also designers uh, kind of deliver uh, their designs through things and activities. So I kind of uh, redefine this, uh, these two uh, ideas as called augmented design. So the first augmented design is about things that the creating human values and future smart things. I, be, I put the smart things because I, the kind of subject matter uh, is mainly about those, uh, those artifacts. And then secondly, is about activities. How can we uh, make these activities? So in fact, I, I coined this term because my influence on uh, augmented reality, I, I was uh, kind of look, looked at these new emerging technologies in, in a long time ago use a lot of uh, projection-based augmented reality to uh, in design domain as a material of design and also uh, subject and a tool for design. So I, I built early, uh, early prototyping tools, this uh, projection-based 
uh, AR tools. Uh, even at that time, you can use a form mockup and then project your software onto uh, your form mockup so then you can have a full experience of software and hardware integrated using the user interface. But uh, in the end, I found that it is not really about technology. It is more about um, values, people's value. So then also, the, from design perspective, uh, the people's value is much more about uh, performance or efficiency or utility. And sometimes it is more about aesthetics and meanings and harmony, as I said. So this notion was, I was uh, really kind of inspired by uh, the Albert Bokman's uh, device paradigm. Sometimes we come up, we, we are facing with very convenient devices, which are like in this case, radiator. So we lose a lot of all old, the nice uh, kind of traditional and aesthetic experience when we had a kind of fire in front. So uh, sometimes we, when we look at the new uh, gadgets, sometimes we lose all these, uh, these values. And also the slow technology, it's more about uh, technology aiming at reflection and moments of mental rest or kind of meaningfulness for, for, our, for, our, for life. So, so these are related to, and then how can we make a technology that is more, that contains more humane value. And the second part about, uh, about more about happiness, because assuming that our preferred state is really about happiness. So this one, I was, uh, then I was thinking about the how can we, how, how people get the happiness, and probably many different, different uh, sources like the family, love, and, but the some, we have to focus on things that can provide happiness. So how, what are the things that we can provide? I, I, was, I was also inspired by the, the positive psychology talk uh, by uh, Seligman. So he was talking about uh, how people get happiness and how can technology can uh, address those happiness. So, so in his book, his key message is that happy lives consist of three key things, like pleasant and good and meaningful life. And, uh, but he's arguing that technology uh, should focus more on increasing positive emotion flow and meaning and then uh, He's saying that instead of making miserable people less miserable, so we should, we should work more on making normal people happier. So I think this is also much more related to what design is about. I, what I explained is mainly uh, sometimes the difference between engineering design and design is sometimes engineering design always come, start with a problem, but sometimes design start with, without the problem. Sometimes people say they're creating a problem, but it's not really a problem. It's, always thinking about the preferred state. So uh, key driver for happiness in this sense is three things in his theory. So positive emotion, flow, or engagement, or meaning. So uh, that's why I was thinking about what are those artifacts. So I, uh, my, the product prototype that we produce are categorized in these three things. So I, I can explain. I can introduce some of the works that we did with our students of these things. The first thing is affective things. Sometimes we, you love an uh, object. Sometimes uh, you have some kind of emotional attachment to the products. So the, one of my students is working on some, the, the, some of the idea called the pemorphic design. So uh, future technology could be like a behave like a pet. So we always may try to make a smart products intelligent and smart but it's, maybe it is too smart. So what we are proposing is like a, a relationship with your pet. So the, uh, but the pet uh, also sometimes does the utility. So the one of the example is guide dogs. But there are many other uh, kind of uh, functional pet, like a hunting dog, or sometimes you have cow, which you add, add the help the agriculture in the past. So there are many, many kind of paths. So uh, the, my, my PhD students have then looked at it uh, and a relationship between people and pet and uh, what makes those relationships and then what is the emotional element and then probably we can make transform technology behaving like pet, which is not really intelligent but it is. So this is one of the kind of a concept model. So for example, we designed a, this uh, camera 
uh, sitting on top of your uh, monitor and then interacting with you, behaving like a pen. By the way, this is half physical, half virtual, so some come down in the monitor and interact with the users with a different kind of expressions and physical expression and virtual expression. So we are, we are looking at uh, what kind of uh, methodology that we can apply using this idea and uh, looking at other application domains like uh, can it, this idea be applied to the car or some other intelligent uh, agent systems and so on. And the second thing is the engaging thing, which is uh, it, it's, it's difficult, but uh, sometimes we can think about the things you get valued uh, as being used. So the project that we uh, published that Kai in 2015 was a patina engraver. This is a, more like a fashionable uh, tracker, which uh, as you use this tracker, it's, uh, it gets beautiful. So the, the data is usually uh, on the digital world, so you don't have a physical manifestation of your, your activity logs. But in this case, we thought about how about this, uh, this tracker visualizes aesthetically as you, uh, as, as you use. So we came up with, with this idea of kind of a, a pattern generation system, which you call a patina engraver, and then uh, tested it uh, with users. So this video shows kind of basic idea. We use this patina because sometimes these traces uh, in, in art or the products uh, it become really aesthetic as you use. Some leather products or some other some aluminum products, it is kind of being old is not always bad. So we, we, we built this kind of piercing system and it's charging back for the tracker so that you put the system overnight, it generates uh, kind of interesting patterns based on your activity. So we, we thought about many different kind of uh, pattern generation system, but uh, we use this piercing system because physically constrained, so you can add more kind of uh, piercing dot graphics to make a physical patterns. A uh, third example is uh, meaningful things. Sometimes you can, uh, you can build products which sometimes uh, improve uh, the positive behaviors or pro po the kind of to improve the, our societal issues. So the, this is a kind of concept design that uh, uh, kind of stimulates people uh, 
to become more energy uh, aware so that uh, there's some design that uh, gives a pulling out uh, kind of instinct or the, the kind of uh, uh, garbage can that the people have different uh, behaviors and you want to, you want to follow in uh, unconsciously and also kind of uh, speedometer which is try to kind of straighten and unconsciously so maybe you can apply this kind of uh, design uh, in real life and then maybe unconsciously kind of encourage your, your echo design behavior. So those are the parts that we are thinking about this, uh, the things issue, but the second part is much more about the design activities. And this is, as I said, is I had a hard time to, uh, to learn design and also I, I have a hard time to uh, doing research in design because uh, we are trained as designers. Sometimes we come to the graduate school and then we suddenly we have to write a papers and do the all kinds of, be familiar with all these design research methods and it's very hard for design students. So uh, I was thinking about, uh, is there any way that we can use our design skills to, in, in design research? So, uh, so the Peter and Steppers in TU Delft, and he also thought about the doing design as part of doing research. And then uh, he drew these images, interesting images. And uh, if you look closer, then uh, what, this is what design is about. And product designers uh, build uh, tools, and then uh, uh, customers uh, are using it. And then we use these, tri these triangles and then uh, kind of proposing and building and testing. This, this is a prototyping state kind of cycle. And uh, in this case, con consumer is a mom, is making the product, which is the food. And then uh, there's another kind of a customer here, kids. So the, it's, this process is basically very similar to design. But uh, for this tool is uh, designed by tool designers and tool designer is exactly doing the same as what designers do. So uh, what we thought was perhaps uh, designers, we can use this process to, uh, to the upper cycle of, uh, of the research. So uh, perhaps we can use these uh, design skills to build uh, tools, methods, and theories. So it is kind of a cycle. So this is the approach that we we, th we, th we think that it's much more appropriate for our design students. So we, that's why we, we were uh, kind of interested in this uh, design analysis transformed into a design model. So instead of kind of using following the very linear activity-based design models, how about uh, think differently? So uh, uh, this model is about uh, consider design as discovering visible and invisible pro properties, which is a bees of the design and linking them in a harmony. So I call it the model uh, objectify the design. And then to apply as a tool, I, I come up with this uh, sketchy format. And the students have to fill out all these Bs. And then sometimes if there is a blank in the Bs, it's, which is not kind of fully uh, one idea, which is a kind of a partially connected idea and then try to think about how those beads are connected and harmonized all together. So I, uh, in my class, I use this form to come up with idea, and then just only one page can, should, this, should explain what this concept is about, how the concept is con kind of connected together. So this is like a model and uh, theory and the tool is combined together as a design tool. Uh, secondly, uh, we also uh, built the tools, which is really kind of uh, improve their practice skills. So some of the tools that uh, we uh, made was uh, something called the M-Sketch, which is uh, designers now uh, design a lot of uh, movements and uh, move kinetic structure. The, one of the uh, uh, quite popular kinetic structure is, is being made by mechanism design in mechanical engineering field. So we made a very designer-friendly kind of version of uh, mechanical mechanism design. But uh, often we can just uh, draw a pass and then the system recommend uh, the most uh, relevant uh, structure instead of kind of building from top. And then you just come from the top-down approach. So this is available on the internet so you can access and then use. So this is one example. Um, I wanted to show the demo, but uh, time's run out, so 
I'll just give. And the second thing is, uh, uh, which is much more complex uh, prototyping tools, which is called the Sketch Studio. Uh, this is a now the situation, the designers, uh, now we started from physical design to the physical and digital hybrid design. So we had to uh, kind of uh, familiar with all kinds of these software development tools. But now it is much more about user experience. User experience involved in the space and people's experience, not only the single users and multiple users. So we, we needed the design tools to uh, expre exper express all these different elements. So, uh, so we, were, we thought about, is there any way that we can uh, quickly prototype in a very sketching stage. So, uh, in this case, I let me show you the demo. So, uh, this is this is the I just only show the one demo, which is uh, showing the busking experience in a very early stage. So. Uh, people bus doing the busking and then you want to donate the money and then you can add all kinds of uh, uh, annotation and then uh, see people's behavior and uh, you can also look at uh, that person's perspective and also choose different paths of the experience and sometimes you look at uh, the mobile phone window and then you can experience uh, that person's uh, uh, perspective, and you. This is a player playback mode, and then you can also open the authoring system. So the authoring system is is looking like this, and there are space elements and temporal elements. You can uh, you can navigate all these experience in edit editor mode, and. Uh, how people use, and you can uh, add those annotations in the scene and also the people's uh, experience. So uh, we are applying this uh, system to the one of the kind of the most uh, high-level uh, studio course in our program, which is a system design course, to think about different user experience, uh, or such as uh, if you uh, imagine the uh, new retailing experience or the smart home experience, then uh, we, we don't have tool, proper tools yet. So we are kind of uh, applying this sort of tools in that sort of situation. So, uh, so you, become, you can become end user and to experience uh, that uh, kind of instantly made uh, user experience. So uh, I explained these two things uh, in the context of augmented design and uh, things can be effective, engaging, meaningful, and uh, activities could be theories, methods, and tools. So now uh, we are facing the fourth technology, which is uh, IoT, big data, AI, and so on. So uh, now we are now thinking di different new futures. So uh, the designers in the future, I think, uh, is uh, have to is becoming replaced by AI-powered design tools. So the kind of some parts of the design activity is being replaced by these design tools. And what is the rule for designers then? So uh, perhaps designers' uh, role is much more about directing and uh, kind of finding the harmonious link with different parts. So the maybe designers' uh, design tools become actors in the design, and then uh, design directors. Uh, maybe much more about guiding directions and selection of the alternatives while the design tools can generate the alternatives. So I'm envisioning future design roles will be much more like a movie director so that uh, being able to work with human and computational actors and also design with sensitivity we have to have a much more sensitive eyes on what is a good design what is a bad design and come up with new ideas and also uh, kind of we, have, we are dealing with a lot of synthetic actors, the computer tools. So I think more designers had to become like a tool designers to do the design activities. So uh, the three things are the, what I expect the future designers should be. And finally, as I said in the Martin Seligman's talk, I think it's, 
the hospital model is currently a lot of research is doing. Uh, we are kind of making less miserable people, pe miserable people less miserable. And perhaps we can think about what would be the kind of uh, the make normal people happier. So it would be result model. So uh, I'm not sure whether we are doing, uh, our research is much more about uh, hospital. So uh, what I see is I think more research should be done in the uh, research with, result with the hospital model. That's my talk. Thank you. So when, when we looked at the pan-morphic design, a lot of literatures were about the real uh, pet dog, a robot. But we, we used, I'm not sure whether really that will give you kind of the wrappers that real pet does. So uh, we are not really talking about that idea. So we are talking about some of the uh, really smart product, which is not really pet dog robot, but uh, it's a relationship level maybe we can have. So uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe that is not something that we are aiming. So uh, the, we still admit that a lot of uh, natural relationship uh, with a with pet uh, should maybe much better. I, I think it needs more research about that. But uh, when we look at the new in intelligent products, sometimes we unconsciously just making it uh, much more, more intelligence, more efficiency, more automation. So we look at in the cars, uh, now, nowadays this, the driverless car or automatic driving is a big issue. But uh, we think that it uh, kind of removes the joy of driving. So does it really uh, good for people? And how, what is the relationship then between the car and me? And then maybe the car could be the horse in the past so that we have an emotional relationship with the car and, and kind of love for the car. But if the car does all the driving and I just sit and sleep, then probably the relationship it is more like a focal thing and uh, the device. So that, that is the pr perspective that, that we have. Yes? Well, yeah. Um, Notice that a few times during your talk you sort of uh, we're sort of like bouncing around the problem of uh, value systems within uh, like the human computer interaction world in terms of uh, like publications and stuff like that, um, and the design world that it sounds like you come from. Um, and I was sort of wondering, like, how do you see uh, mediating this tension between like aesthetic concerns and scientific concerns? Mm, I'm not sure that I can uh, respond to that properly, but uh, one of the struggles that I have in design domain is that designers, practice designers, don't read the papers. 
and uh, they are not really interested in uh, academic communities. And also, academic communities also have uh, struggles uh, that we put a lot of energies and a lot of intellectual resources, but uh, nothing happens actually. <laughs> so the so the very occasionally few things apply to the industry, but as soon as you get the get the PhD and you go to the industry, then uh, depending on your job, sometimes you 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 don't care about what what's been happening. So that's why we, as you gradually first, uh, mainly we focus on this academic community scientific approaches that we get. Uh, we should also have to prove ourselves as a quality, but the, gradually we. Uh, the main research these days that we wanted to really make a tools to make it available to the end users is that sometimes publishing a paper and also make a really usable tools and deploy into to the real world may be sometimes more meaningful or maybe in different roles. So uh, aesthetic side too. So maybe I think it's the design community. I think it's technology side too. The, we have to always kind of have a connection of those kind of channels that we can transfer and kind of exchange our kind of outcomes. So that's why uh, design communities talk about the research product uh, or kind of those things that uh, maybe we can have a better communication. So, but the, one of the important kind of medium is the prototype. So we have very polished, really usable prototypes and probably industry, they don't read, but they enjoy watching videos and using the prototype. I think that's the kind of thing that we can do. Yeah, uh, uh, but I think as I'm not sure that I can. Uh, uh, but one of the things that we, we write a long papers, but the sometimes uh, writing, reading long paper, writing paper is really time consuming. So, uh, in AI domain, for example, uh, I knew that industry ex experts from design experts uh, introduced that she she saw a YouTube channel called the Too Many Papers. I'm not sure whether you are familiar with that. Too many papers. It's a YouTube channel which explains most up-to-date AI research within two minutes. So there's a what's happening, what, what is, and then you can read it. Uh, you can watch the video, and then you can, if you're interested, you can read more like a full paper. So it's more like an abstract, but more exciting, different format uh, that you can get access to the what's happening in academia. So maybe, I think uh, medium can do something. I think it to to combine this, uh, this, this this separation. I think we don't have to always think about this kind of this LaTeX PDF format that is really hard. So the, I think it's a positive that because we now Kai community we now is men, almost like a mandatory to have a video, but which means the students have another skill. So in, in addition to the writing skill, you need to have another video making skill, video shooting skills. It's kind of endless. So that and time consuming, that, that, that's a challenge, but the still, I think in the future, as soon as maybe the making video skill would be as, as important as a writing skill maybe in the future. Yes? A side question on that. So the videos that you make, like the ones that you're showing here, who makes those in your department? So we make. So the, uh, because we are, we, we use a lot of different, uh, different design tools, but uh, most of the videos that we make. And in the, in, in the past, that was uh, one of the things that we can, sh we can uh, compete, because we don't write well, but we can have a better video making skill. <laughs> but uh, now, a lot of uh, engineers also make a nice video, so it is kind of competing each other. <laughs> but uh, we, we, we have a moving design class, so we have we invite uh, experts so that uh, we use ex active and our undergraduate level because video become main medium to explain 
these days. And also the video was a main medium to explain the user experience in some states. So uh, still a lot of uh, video ex user experience is, is being made by film. So uh, filmmaking or very quick storyboarding and making it into interactive video is a core skill for our design. I think we have time for one more. Uh, that's a difficult, so uh, it's a very hard. So uh, even usability sometimes, usability also there is a satisfaction uh, side, so which is very difficult to measure. So I, we don't have a kind of really kind of nice scientific tool, but uh, we just really in-situ in -situ experience. And then uh, it's much more about uh, deep uh, critical discussion and reflection. And uh, it, it's much more a philosophical issue whether we can uh, measure the aesthetics in experience or the art. So uh, that's a still, uh, we, we don't have a right uh, kind of quantifiable tool, but uh, maybe we are trying to how can we kind of go deeper. But uh, it's kind of through deep discussions and reflection. I think that's, that's the way. But really excellent designers sometimes, or film too, film critics have different levels of deep critics and then you can actually discuss about the values. So we use uh, research through design as to so open up uh, what is the behind rationals and why this particular design is chosen and better. So that kind of uh, uh, unfolding design process, design idea is, is right now is a, the way that we do. And also the actually measuring the user experience is not in a very specific way, but more deep user experience study in situ. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the great talk.